Film folks. Nick here. This is Otto just behind me. And this is a Tierra Permaculture vlog. I was hoping to get out here before it started raining, but just as I sit down, it is starting to sprinkle. So hopefully it'll just be a light sprinkle. Uh, the past uh, four, three or four days, we've probably had something close to eight to 10 inches of rain here. Um, it's pretty much been raining every day, all day. So uh, things are very wet. So I did a couple things to prep for that. And I'm just gonna talk a little bit about how I pacify water across my landscape here, uh, just to try to help us maintain control, minimize erosion, and uh, just kind of use that water to the best of, best of our abilities as much as we can here. Here's Otto. He's very playful this morning. He didn't even want to come out the door like he usually does. So uh, I'm sure we'll see him running around throughout the whole morning. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Good boy. All right, so you're just gonna look really quick at yesterday's rain. So there's a full inch right there, easily a full inch with auto coming in the background. And then we also have all of that. And on top of that full one inch. All right, there's two inches. So yesterday was 2.45-ish, looks like to me. So about uh, 61 mil. Pretty, pretty crazy. And that was just yesterday. And uh, a couple days before that, they were both inch and a half and inch and a half. There's Otto licking the grass. He likes to get the rain off the grass there. It's one of his little pastimes. Pretty funny to me. As you can see, we're pretty rainy out here uh, already. It's starting to rain now. It looks like we're probably gonna have rain at least most of the morning. You can see the really dark gray skies, the mountain over here very kind of stormy you can see the storm clouds here really kind of dust or dusty cloudy over there so it's pretty pretty wet these days and uh it's supposed to keep on doing that i'm just going to try to do a quick vlog because i don't have too much time because it's going to be like this and it might start pouring at any point so i'm going to try to quickly avoid that so main thing i'm going to talk about is the rain we got so much rain the past uh, few days that i wanted to show you guys how i'm managing that uh, water uh, moving across my landscape so it doesn't erode anything and actually I can use that water to our benefit here. So let's take a look at a couple of the systems. All right, so first and foremost, I have a lot of grass. Uh, that is because grass is really good at helping hold the soil together. Um, and especially here in the tropics, I make sure that I have enough grass across the whole property that I can A, uh, protect the sloped areas that I am not walking on so much and B, use that area as mulch. So I'm kind of stacking a function here. So I'm using this grass as mulch throughout the gardens as well as for compost and whatever else I need for, for bedding inside of the, uh, inside the chicken coop or both the uh, chicken egg box. So they have something nice and soft to lay on. So this serves so many purposes on my site, but first and foremost, it's holding the stability of the soil. Um, because this whole area, it's right along the edge here. You can see we have this weird kind of drainage channel. And yesterday, I think I have a shot of it going pretty fast and flowing because it had been pretty much raining nonstop for uh, about two or three hours when I came out and got some footage. So I'll leave a little bit of that over here if you, just so you guys can get, a, get an idea of how much water actually flows down here. So this all comes from the, uh, the road drainage above and it's all connected. It actually runs underneath this house. So you can see down there, there's this little channel it goes down there. That's one of uh, Otto's favorite place to play. It's his little cave. And it goes underneath the house and then up above there. So that's, uh, that's kind of the first thing. We have this drainage ditch, we have grass. Grass is really good at kind of holding things together and keep it grow. It doesn't have to be grass either, as long as it's some sort of ground cover. If you're not using a bed or anything like that, make sure you have a ground cover or something to hold that soil together, especially when you're having a lot of heavy rain. Uh, if you can't actually put down a lot of, uh, or get grass growing really quickly, if you're trying to get grass to grow, mulching, you can see here, I mulch my garden beds to make sure they stay nice and uh, nice and protected from the rain. And it is picking up really quick, so I'm just gonna go underneath and I'll keep talking to you about a mulch when we get underneath my little cover area. But back to mulch, mulching, raindrops hitting the, hitting the soil actually compact the soil up to six inches deep. So having a bare soil when there's a lot of rain, especially heavy rain, it can actually compact your soil and cause make it hard for the roots to grow down and be happy and everything. So protecting your soil either with a living crop, something like, you know, grass or a cover crop of some sort. Uh, here's Otto taking a little bit of shelter underneath here. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted by Otto there. Uh, 
Keeping your soil covered with either a living crop, grass, cover crops, whatever you have, or mulch will actually help keep your soil from compacting or overly compacting really, because some of it will cause some compaction no matter what. Um, here in the tropics, because we have these really big, heavy rain events, um, and I can't necessarily have everything growing, an area where it's usually kind of degraded and just because the chickens end up scratching everything from their pen here, and they kick it through this fence and it ends up down here. And this whole area uh, stays without growing any grass because it's, it's, it's disturbed too much to actually grow grass. Here I'm using palm fronds from this palm tree right above us from this cocoa palm, you can see there. So I cut down four of the, uh, four of the fronds on, uh, well, right before all this major rain came, and I laid those down here. And these guys are helping just protect the soil from all that heavy rain right here, especially because I know there's nothing growing here. So before any major rain event like this, where I know I'm gonna have lots and lots of rain, I always make sure that I try to cover this little area. Uh, and this can be done pretty much anywhere. If you guys have, you know, pathways that are really muddy or anything like that, adding mulch to pathways, that'll help just keep the mud down. And also just keep you from losing soil uh, with the rain, because as the rain's hitting the soil and it's moving down your property or wherever you are, um, it's, it can carry that soil with you and then you're losing soil. That's erosion. That's basically what erosion is. So um, trying to avoid erosion at all costs. Mulching is a really good strategy and keeping all of your, uh, anything that's bare soil, keeping that with some sort of growth on it, um, grass, cover crop, whatever you can, um, or in production. And if it is in production, then it just might need a little bit of extra shelter if it's gonna be super, super heavy rain if you don't wanna lose your crop. That's just something you have to consider based on what your crop is. You can see here I have sweet potato growing. That's kind of the main crop right now in this bed. It's actually just this whole bed's about to get kind of a revamp and replant. So um, it's kind of in the middle, middle of the ground now. But right before this event, I noticed that there was a big kind of bare spot right there. So I just took a bunch of banana leaves there and uh, threw them down just to give it a little bit of extra protection for this, this little rainstorm. I'll just pull those out when I'm done, uh, when I do reset this bed in a little bit. So uh, yeah, not too bad here. That's, uh, that's pretty much how I'm protecting the soil, mulching. And I'll, I'll show you really quick in one of these beds. I, I think I've already shown this, but um, up here, here's in my most new bed that I planted. Um, it's in this little protective covering because the chickens kept getting out. So I wanted to keep it from uh, getting too, uh, too d damaged by those chickens. So I basically added this nice, easy, uh, light layer of mulch. And that's basically protecting the seeds. And you can actually see there is some radish coming up. Actually, maybe you can't see. There is some radish starting to come up here. Um, so this stuff is growing. I seeded this all right before this big rainstorm, just so I could uh, not have to think about watering. Um, the one maybe downside is there's so much rain that some of it might actually end up rotting out, rotting the seed out. So we're just gonna see, I see the radishes are coming up just fine. So uh, the other things in here are amaranth and carrot. So we'll see if any of those end up growing. Um, the other thing I did here is instead of just having the mulch layer here, I actually added a layer of this uh, burlap kind of shade fabric. And what this is doing is it's just kind of giving the rain something to kind of hit on um, before it hits the soil. So it's going to slow down, boom, it's going to hit here. It's going to absorb into this or it'll go through and then it'll drip down from there. So instead of being like a raindrop that's flying straight down from the sky, it's kind of giving a little bit of a buffer and then it's going to go down. So you'll notice I did not do that with this bed. This bed was well mulched before the rain started, so I don't have to think about that. And it was directly seeded, but at this point, the chickens have got in here a couple times and destroyed a lot of it, as well as uh, I think the mulch layer is a little too thick on this one. You'll notice you can't really see any bare soil. Whereas here, if you look down, uh, you might not be able to see it right now, but you can kind of see bare soil patches like in between there, 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 there. You can kind of see through it to let the seeds poke out. So this one, I think I ended up uh, mulching a little too heavily. So it is protecting the soil really well, which is good for me right now, but I may end up needing to reseed. There are some things coming up and I think they might be all right, but we're just gonna have to kind of wait and see, see what ends up coming up. This is why I always also seed into my little mini greenhouse over there, uh, whatever I'm planting, uh, assuming that I can, like carrots I can't kind of start, those need to be direct seeded, but anything I can start, like the green onions, I have a whole uh, two rows of those in the greenhouse that I can transplant in here just in case these things didn't take off and that's okay. So 
That is basically what I'm doing with the rain to kind of keep my beds safe. It's mulching, it's uh, adding a little bit of protection above there, uh, and it's just making sure that something's growing. That's the key, make sure something is growing at all times. Uh, real quick, I'll just show you these two beds just so you can kind of see. This one is probably the least mulched of them all, but it does have a nice canopy cover of these papaya, or papaya, uh, well yeah, they are the, there's two papayas and there's also these uh, banana plantains right here. So it's giving it a nice coverage over there so it's gonna be protected from those heavy raindrops. This bed too, it's also probably one of my least mulch, but there is a decent amount of uh, mulch on there. I had a lot of leaves and everything right before the rains. And then it also is protected here. So having some sort of high uh, canopy cover to help you protect your protect your garden beds, that's really good, especially in the tropics. A lot of those times, that high shade, that's what you need to keep your plants growing in that hot season. We're obviously not in the hot season right now, we're in the cool season, because uh, this is in November in Puerto Rico. So it's actually been quite nice and enjoyable to be out here, with the exception of it's been raining nonstop for four days. So I haven't actually been able to really do anything out here. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna talk about today is how I'm controlling the water flows across the site to minimize erosion and minimize harm to, my, uh, to the system here. So first and foremost, it's a, uh, it should be pretty obvious, but basically this is the uphill side and then this is the downhill side. All the water comes down, there's the neighbor's property there, it comes down through the fence line, comes down into here, and then as it gets to this first little uh, green strip here, uh, this green strip right here is actually slanted slightly this way, so it kind of comes this way a little bit, and uh, it comes down and then right to where Otto's sitting there, being a perfect little guide marker. I think he's about to pounce on something. He's thinking about it. Uh, right there, there's a small little uh, piece of uh, wood, and that's mainly a step, but it also serves as a really nice level sill. So this water here, whatever it doesn't absorb into the, uh, into the grass here and uh, is excess, it actually will end up going this way, heading down to this rock here right where Otto is and then moves down here onto this little platform. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Anything that's along this uh, kind of greenery right here, it just moves down this slope. And that's why this whole slope is grass so it can basically take care of itself and I don't have to think about the water. And anything going down here, you can see right underneath the greenhouse, there's a little bit of a cutout where that wall is, and that's where all that excess water ends up flowing right down and into this little drainage. So this whole side of the property ends up draining straight down or soaking into the soil. That's obviously another option there. Up here, right before this rain, I actually uh, broad forked this area. I actually used a garden fork. It wasn't a broad fork, but basically I, I stuck in the garden fork as deep as I could and I lifted the soil. So I'm not turning it. I'm not trying to destroy the grass there. I want the grass to stay, but I'm adding some aeration holes and some holes for the water to actually percolate through down to the, the lower la layers of the soil. And I'm also lifting so the entire soil structure kind of lifts up, gets a little bit of extra air and it also allows some extra drainage. So right before this whole, uh, this whole storm, I did that to this entire length. So this area was able to sink a lot more water than it usually did. I didn't actually see too much water running off this way like I usually do. So I'm glad I got to that. All right, moving on to this section. Actually, I guess we'll start over here. So any water that's coming from this part of the property down, as well as the water that's coming off of this roof, right now it comes down and hits this you can see this is kind of like my my scrap area so where i throw everything where i where i just need to put it somewhere for some time before i clean it up so apologies for all the the messiness but this whole thing comes down here it drips there and then some of it will run down into the chicken pen but a lot of it comes this way and into this little step here and then these little stepways uh this also serves as a water flow so i allow any excess water that doesn't go this way to come back towards me and it ends up coming down here falls down here goes flows down and hits that big uh, kind of stepping stone right outside the gate here all right so the water here you can see i'll play some footage from yesterday so you can get an idea of how the water flows but this whole area it actually slopes slightly this way so it goes that way towards the uh towards the middle there and it's 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 slanted at about a one percent slope that way so any excess water that hits here, it's gonna avoid going into the, uh, directly into this bed, but this whole pathway is actually an area where it can actually soak in. So there's about three inches of gravel here, uh, so there's lots of room for the water to kind of get in here. 
and then whenever it hits that base and starts flowing the entire flow is just a slight flow this way so i'm slowing that water down and i'm allowing it to soak as much as possible um, and i'm basically spreading it i'm spreading it out so instead of having it all in one area and, and concentrated and, and potentially causing erosion i'm really causing it to uh to slow it down spread it out and soak it in that's what I'm doing. So it slows down on this nice level or close to level surface that has a slight grade that way. And then I spread it out and allow it to soak. So any excess water, anything that is uh, over the amount that this system can handle ends up coming towards us here. Now I'm on the other side. It comes towards us here. And then this right here, this uh, wooden piece, that's what I call a level sill spillway. Um, you can make these out of clay, you can make them out of rock, there's so many different ways to do it, right? But this one little piece of wood acts as a level sill, and the water flows really passively over the lip of that. Um, and again, I have the images of that, I'll show you right now. Um, so it's a nice, easy, gentle flow. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, take a lot of uh, erosion or pressure, it's just nice and gentle flow down there. And right underneath here, I have some rocks just to help in the couple areas where uh, it does kind of concentrate. It tends to concentrate right around here. And so it'll flow down and hit those rocks. You can see the rocks actually have moved. They're usually just piled up here. So this level sill allows the water to slow, to, to basically flow down this way. And that level sill is set just slightly lower than this entire pathway. So this entire pathway is allowed to fill up first. And then once it's full, about you know half inch one inch deep right here then it can start passing over this level sill and then the water flows nice and gently down down this pathway this is the main pathway that we use to walk through this this little backyard so it's reinforced and then once it gets down here it basically flows either straight towards this palm and down through here through this rock or it flows this way and over to where these palm fronds are and down Water flows from up here, flows down, and then ends up coming around here. Down, down, down. And then it ends up hitting this little plain, this little uh, pasture area right underneath these plantains. And from here, it goes straight to the base of the property. And it ends up in the drainage ditch. So you can see right here, we're at the drainage ditch again. That's what it's kind of looking like coming from up there. Um, this area is actually overgrown. I probably should have cleaned this out before uh, this storm, but it actually held just fine. And it's gonna help filter any, any kind of toxins out of here. But right here at the very bottom here, this is an area where I wanna make sure I protect because this is where I'm gonna, my last chance to keep the soil on my property. So I actually have a, a row of, uh, of sugarcane right here that I'm hoping to basically create a nice big bunching clump of uh, sugar canes to help just hold back any soil from going that way and losing it off the property because this is the bottom of the property. At this point, once it gets to this, this area right down here, this is where I need to stop any soil from leaving. And so it's nice to have this little pasture area because the pasture area is also going to kind of hold anything. And it's a nice flat area to deposit all that excess soil, anything that is washing down. And then before it leaves the property, I do have a nice little barrier down there, or I will once those grow up. So that's how the water flows down the property. So after all that, I'm just going to quickly play a uh, little, some footage I took yesterday in the middle of the rain. Uh, it was pouring for about an hour and a half, two hours, and I came out here and got um, some nice footage of the actual flows. So I'll play that now just so you can get an idea of uh, how those are flowing. I've already played a lot of it, but just, just to give you an idea. So starting here, uh, I'm basically going to show you here comes the cat down the down the hill and I'll actually cut over to uh, the, the shot I have of the water flowing down this way. So you can see a nice gentle flow down the pathway. Um, easy, easy flow. The one spot that it actually kind of gets to potentially some erosion is actually right here. I'm cutting back to this normal film now. Uh, you can see here, it's, I have these set up so that I can actually flow water through. So the path runs down and this is all gravel and right here behind these two pieces of uh, these cinder blocks uh, right here I have a cutout area about six inches and I have a bunch of large rock and then all the gravel on top so as the water flows down here it sinks in right behind here and it can actually flow right through the middle there of these uh, cinder blocks and the cinder blocks they were actually old old and they're full of stuff uh, so actually you can see it's slowly kind of 
rushing out as the as the water erodes it out. So this is kind of the erosion stuff that you see here. Um, that's why it looks really kind of muddy right there. In reality, it's just everything's flowing exactly as we want it to. So back to the footage. So the water flows nice and gentle um, all the way down. Uh, I think I also have some footage of it going from the top. So I'll show you that too, just so you can get an idea of the whole water flow across the site. Um, it's really cool to see this water flow and see how, how it's pacified, how it's really gentle flowing. It's slowing, it's spreading, it's soaking. That's what we think about in permaculture. How can you slow the water down, spread it out, and soak it in before you then allow it to move down your property and off your property or to wherever you're sending it, whether that be a pond, whether that be a swale, whether that be uh, just somewhere, a drainage ditch, wherever you need to put it based on uh, you know, your context. So, so yeah, I just wanted to share that experience of the, of the heavy rain and, and, and seeing how the actual heavy rain is affecting the design work that I did back here and seeing whether or not things are holding up. So far, so good. Um, we're always making adjustments. We're always uh, seeing what's working and what needs adjustment and, and going from there. So uh, this certainly isn't a finished, uh, finished system. It's always being tinkered with a little bit uh, but so far everything seems to be working pretty well and I just want to share that with you so you can get an idea of how I'm managing the water flows across this property even when we're having these massive massive rain events uh, dropping like two and a half inches of rain uh, in you know 24 hours or more because that happens quite often here so hope you didn't hope you guys enjoyed that I'm gonna call it for now because it looks like we have some more rain coming in I just need to take care of the chickens real quick but I'm sure uh, you guys won't mind missing one of those for one 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 little time here they are in case you do want to see them chickens are happy we actually actually have uh henry is integrated in here i actually had to do some uh work to keep everyone in because they kept getting out and since i did that henry hasn't figured out how to escape and he just decided to uh integrate in so that's some good news we also learned uh in some fresh news that henry is in fact a rooster so it is henry the he uh, finally have identified Henry as crowing. Uh, so that's a pretty fun little, fun little new stuff. So it, that just means that likely Henry will end up being called because we don't really need an, another rooster here. Um, and most of the people we know are only going to take a rooster for eating anyway. So likely it's going to be a harvest whenever we need some extra chickens. So, uh, poor Henry, but for, for now he'll have a good life. And uh, it it's, makes more sense why he wasn't integrating so well because he was a rooster and our rooster was probably very against letting another rooster join his flock. So um, makes a little bit more sense now. Uh, it's nice to know that it wasn't just uh, us being doing something wrong. It's just that's how, uh, that's how things are panning out. One last look at Otto here. He's saying goodbye to you guys as, we're, as I'm wrapping up here. Good boy. He got a little bit wet, but you can see Otto doesn't really mind being wet. You can see he's soaked right now, but that's normal. He'll walk out in the rain, no problem at all. He's an odd cat that way. So, all right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Hope that kind of gave you an idea of how I'm managing the water flows across my site and a couple of different strategies to help you uh, protect your soil and also manage the water flows across your site in those heavy rains, especially in the tropics. Uh, these kind of methods can be applied pretty much anywhere, um, but I am in the tropics and that's kind of where I'm specifying most of uh, my techniques here. So. I uh, hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. And if you do like what I'm doing, please share this, uh, this video or another video that you see or subscribe, share the channel. It just helps me get the word out there and get more viewers and, uh, and just kind of give, give me some motivation to keep going. Every time I see these things shared and those, those viewer counts go up and everything, it just makes my day. So uh, I'd really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, until next time, have a good one.